swift as can be. Watch it flying through the air. It travels in space or under the sea, and it can journey anywhere. Supercar, supercar. It travels on land or roams the skies through the heavens' stormy rage. It's Mercury man, and everyone cries. It's the marvel of the age. Supercar, supercar. warms up slowly when there's humidity in the atmosphere. Yeah, but it's so seldom damp out here, it's not worth air conditioning the place. Anyway, it's running smoothly now. Just as well, I guess, if we're letting the press boys know about it. What do you mean? Well, the Greyburn News Agency. You've contacted them, haven't you? I don't understand, Mike. I've said nothing to anyone. Well, that's mighty strange. Why should I talk to these Greyburn people? Subakar is top secret. Well, when I was in town ordering supplies, some guy came up and started asking questions. He knew who I was and about you and Supercar, too. So I reckoned you must have told the press. I tell you, no. Who was this man? Like I said, he was from the Greyburn News Agency. So you see, friend Zarin, all is so simple. A counterfeit news agency card, a short interview, and I am on the track of what I want. Good, Master Spy. Good. It was a clever trick. But naturally, it was clever. You expect Master Spy to play the fool? Do you? No, no. You, Master Spy. Never. Very well. But you, did you do your part? The man Mercury, did you follow him? I followed him. Excellent. Then show me, where is this desert laboratory? Here, Master Spy. Oh, a place of extreme isolation. <laughs> that is to our advantage. They will not expect visitors. Least of all will they be prepared for Master Spy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's forget this guy. For the moment, anyway. The next move's up to him in any case. All right, Mike. As you say, there is nothing for us to do at the moment. What do you want to look at, Jimmy? Well, Dr. Beaker was doing something earlier this morning, but he was too busy to show me. Yeah, he usually is. And Mitch was with him, too. Come to think of it, I haven't seen Mitch all morning. <laughs> I don't know what that is, Jimmy, but I'll bet it's Beaker. Me, too. Let's go and see what he's cooked up. Satisfactory. Mm, most satisfactory. Well, what is it, Dr. Baker? Uh, well, uh, I think it'd be rather too difficult to explain to the non-scientist. Uh, roughly speaking, however, the, the hub uh, of the matter is in this small uh, black box. Mm, well... It's hardly out of the design state, of course. 
Well, what is it, Doctor? A secret weapon or a device for scaring sharks? And I expect you to be serious. It's taken me a good deal of time to develop. <coughs> well, it sure seems to have scared Mitch. At least it's made him pretty mad. <coughs> you see what I mean, Dr. Beaker? Now, come on, what is it? Plain language that we can understand, please. Yeah, Dr. Beaker. What's it for? Well, it's, uh, it's really all quite simple uh, once you understand it. The cathode ray tube here draws a signal from the uh, their box here uh, and registers an impulse when it does so. At the same time, audible warning is given from the speaker mm, up there. Yeah, you see? And uh, well, that's really, really nearly all there is to it. Now, if I could only get some sort of reasonable balance on the amplifier here, I could... Um, Yes, Dr. Beaker, but what's it for? Well, I guess we aren't going to get through to Dr. Beaker for the moment. I'll tell you what, Jimmy, there's something you could do for me. What's that, Mike? Well, you could help me look around all these benches for anything. Any papers, drawings to do a supercar. Then I think we'll put them in the safe. Gee, Mike, you mean because of that man you talked to? Then you are worried about him, just like the professor is. Well, let's not say worried. Let's just say that there's no use taking unnecessary chances. All this stuff ought to be locked up anyway. Well, that's about it. You know, working in a place like this, Professor, sometimes there gets to be more stuff lying around than you ever dreamed was possible. I have no doubt that with you in charge of things, Mike, things are going to be much more tidy from now on. <laughs> what do you think we should do with the papers now we've collected them all? Well, I suppose Jimmy can take them downstairs and put them in the safe. Think you can manage that, Jimmy? Sure, I can. Okay, then. <laughs> He's a nice kid, that Jimmy. Are you as ready to help? Good day, Professor. Mr. Mercury. Master Spy, what are you doing here? I have come to finish our discussion about supercar. So it was you in disguise as the news reporter. I might have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't, did you? This is a nice place you have here, Professor. And that, I think, is your supercar. That is none of your business. That's where you are wrong, Professor. It is my business. You see, I have come to take something away with me. I heard you from the gallery, Professor, and I think what I want is in that suitcase. Come back here, boy. Do as he says, Jimmy. That is right, my friends. Do just as I say. Not move anyone. Hey, what's he doing? That crazy fool, he's got a lighter. If he messes around with that, this place will go up like a volcano. <laughs> you are right, Mr. Mercury. If you do not do as I say, supercar is going to go up in flames. <laughs> I say, uh, uh, excuse me, is there a smell of um, gasoline about you? Or am I imagining it? My dear sir, do you realize you are positively paddling in aviation spirit? Idiot! Of course I know. I can't say I approve of your manners. Besides, I have work to do. And for goodness sake, put that thing away. There's some sort of leak somewhere. Professor! Professor! All right, Dr. Baker, everything will be all right soon. We have Master Spy with us. Good heavens! Master Spy! At your service, Dr. Beaker. Well, I've got work to do, if you'll excuse me. Oh, -ho. <laughs> and what work is that? I seem to have heard that question before. If he's any better than us at getting an explanation out of Beaker, I'll be surprised. My dear sir, it would take far too much time to explain to you now. My work is vital to the functioning of supercar. Is that so, Mr. Beaker? Mm -hmm. What? 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 
Uh, what uh, is that you are handling now? Uh, this uh, is part of the flight control system. It's something quite new. A uh, supercar cannot uh, uh, be expected to fly without it. Yes, if you'll excuse me, I, I'm doing important work on it. So, is it uh, completed? Oh, yes. Yes, just testing it now. Of course. It will revolutionize ordinary flying, too. Really, sometimes I think Bigger is just not with us. What on earth does he think he's doing? Thank you, Dr. Bigger. Now listen, all of you. Do just as I say. I am sorry, but I have to leave you now. I shall take your case with me. Put it down. And I will trouble you for that box, Dr. Beaker. I say, I'd, uh, I'd rather you didn't. Oh, great. We're going to let him get away with a bunch of plans and whatever it is Beaker's just dreamed up. Yes, we are. Mike, you know just as well as I do that it would only take a second to drop that lighter and send the whole place up. We can't risk it. Very wise, Professor. <laughs> and in case... You thought of following me. <laughs> get an extinguisher. There's gasoline all over the place. Come in, come in. Come in, come in. Okay for the moment. Main current off, Professor? Yes. And nobody hurt, right? I'm okay, Mike. So is Mitch. <laughs> you surely aren't going to let that Russian get away. Actually, it doesn't matter much. I'd better go and uh, uh, ascertain that my equipment is all right. Oh, great. Fine help he is. Hands over a bonus free of charge, and now he says it doesn't matter much. Ah, stop worrying, Mike. The important thing to find out is how much damage has been done to the equipment. Sure thing, Professor. Also, how long it'll take to fix it so we can get after that guy. There, it begins to look a bit more reasonable. How are you making out, Professor? It will work. I think, Mike. Give us a few more hours. We don't want to take any risks. A few more hours? Oh, I suppose you're right, Professor. He's already got too much of a head start on us. What do you mean, Mike? Won't we be able to find him and the plans? What are we going to do then? I don't know. I suppose we'll have to call in the police. What do you think, Professor? I suppose so. But I don't want to. I don't want to have everyone know all about Supercar. And if we call in the police, there will be reporters, real ones this time. Yeah, I guess you're right. But I don't see what else we can do. Gee, what was that? Well, say, Dr. Beaker, I thought you gave Master Spy the project you were working on. Uh, quite so. He did, in fact, uh, take it with him. I, uh... I'm afraid I was perhaps uh, guilty of a small uh, deception. The apparatus in question was nothing to do with the control system. Then what is it, Dr. Beaker? Well, uh, actually it's a form of... Mm, uh, 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 ...direction-finding apparatus. Uh, that box he took away with him was, so to speak, the transmitter. Uh, I was designing a navigation aid for supercar, and I thought it... Uh, you mean to say, Dr. Beaker, that that guy has taken with him some sort of radio transmitter? Yes. And you can tell what direction he's gone? Well, yes. You see, that box gives out a signal at intervals which, if conditions are right, I can... Yes, you see, I can distinctly pick up the transmitted signal. It's like a sort of portable radio beacon. Precisely. Exactly. A small radio beacon. Of course, there is a good deal of accessory equipment involved, you understand. Well, never mind, Dr. Beaker, never mind. Does it work? Work? Of course it works. All my inventions work. Okay, Doctor, okay. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Hey, how long does that gizmo keep transmitting for? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, weeks, I should think. Unless he starts to tamper with it. Well, then what are we waiting for? Professor, how soon will Supercar be ready for takeoff? Well, I don't know, Mike. I, I don't know how good the temporary circuits we've rigged up are. We ought to test it. Well, let's get testing. Dr. Beaker, you keep that thing beamed on him. I will uh, do my best. Fine. Then the rest of us can get to work and patch up supercar. 
I think that Mr. Master Spy is in for a shock. <laughs> There we are, Jimmy. Still, what shall I say? Bang on target. <laughs> now, all we have to do is to get this portion of the equipment transferred to supercar. How's it coming, Professor? Nearly ready for trial, Mike. I'm not very happy about it, but no doubt you're impatient. I sure am, Professor. I want to get after that guy as fast as I can. Never mind whether the controls look beautiful, just so long as they work. Are you sure you don't want to wait until the morning? Mike, it could be risky flying at night. I know it. But I gotta get the master spy before he starts investigating that box and finds out what it is. What are you planning on doing, Mike? I don't exactly know. I'll have to figure out the details when I find him. One thing's for sure, he won't have let that box out of his sight. When I find the box, I find him. All right, Mike, I'll leave it to you. Ready to test engines? Ready and waiting, Professor. Most of the switch gear is still out of commission. Stand by to charge port engine. Not exactly tidy, but it works. Roger. 5,000, 7,000, 9,000. I'll fire as soon as we hit 15,000. We can test the interlock later. Just as you like, Mike. 11,000, 12,000, 13,000, 14,000. Ready to hit her. Hold it, Mike. The wiring's overheating. I can't help it, Professor. I'll have to fire the starboard engine when it's charged. I'll switch her off almost as soon as she catches light. As quick as you can, then, Mike, or we shall have to have another session with the fire extinguishers. Roger, Professor. Just coming up. 15,000. Fire one. Okay, starboard lit. Switching off now. You'd better come out of there and give me a hand. We'll need to rewire the first stage of the console with heavier cable. Then we'll test the other engines and the wing controls. Roger, Professor. I'll be with you in a minute. Meanwhile, Dr. Beaker can be installing his stuff. We should get off in an hour with some luck. All set then, Mike. We've about tested everything now. Pilot the console. Okay, let's make this snappy. We've been long enough as it is. Charging port. Coming up 15. 15,000 now. Interlock on then. Fire one. Starboard charging. Opening roof doors. You can climb straight out, Mike. Coming 15. Fire two. All set, Professor. Selecting vertical. Is everything going all right, Professor? Sure, Jimmy. He's a couple of hundred feet up already. Right. Now let's try out your bug hunter, Dr. Beaker. Mike? Yes, Dr. Beaker? Commence turn to port until the trace on your tube is level with the sight line. Roger, port rate one. On the button, Doc. Satisfactory. Most satisfactory. Gee, Dr. Beaker, is that all there is to it? Mm, substantially, yes. As long as he keeps that line central, he's flying straight down the signal beam from the box. Uh, wherever it is. And what do you think of that? <laughs> it was very easy. Good, Master Spy. 
You had no trouble. <laughs> no, in fact, a fool called Beaker gave me a bonus. <laughs> a new control system for supercar. Only just developed. <laughs> they are fools. All of them. <laughs> Control the pilot. What is your heading? Switching to video plan, Control. Looks like I'm still on course. Okay, Mike. It's up to you, but don't take any chances. All seems to be here. Tomorrow we will study them more. What about the box? The box? Ah, uh, that is more interesting. Tomorrow you will find me a man we can trust, and man who knows about such things, and we will examine it. <laughs> Supercar to base, still on course. Looks like I'm still headed straight for him. Hey, Doc, how do I know if I haven't overshot your transmitter, Gizmo? Uh, you see the trace on your screen. Yeah? When you are directly over the transmitter, that trace line will shorten until it is only a dot in the center of your screen. I get it. What about the overshoot? Mm, yeah, the overshoot. Yes. Well? They're elementary, my dear fellow. When you are over the target, the trace line becomes a dot. As you mm, uh, uh, overshoot, uh, it will lengthen again. Roger. What are you going to do when you find Master Spy, Mike? I don't know yet, Jimmy. I'll work that out when I get there. The line shortening, Doc. How near does that mean I am? Five miles, perhaps. In that case, I reckon this guy's plumb in the middle of the city. Hey, wait. Hey, I'm nearly on target. That's it. Cutting horizontal drive. Now stationary, altitude 1,000 feet. Switching to clear view for under survey. Seem to be over the city okay. Going down slowly to take a look. Do you reckon I can land on a roof if I have to, Professor? If you can find a flat area that's large enough, yes. Right, I'm taking her down. Altitude 700, 600. Three, two, five, two hundred, one eighty. Don't expect me to come down to zero because there's a nice tall office block there just waiting for me to sit on it. You're still over the transmitter? On the button, just like a homing pigeon. Here we go. You okay, Mike? Sure. I think I've been somebody's TV aerial, though. So, friend Zarin, that I feel will suffice for tonight. Shall I lock the plants away? Mars the spy. That won't be necessary. I'll take those. You. What are you doing here? I just looked in to collect some left luggage. I'll take that transmitter, too, if you don't mind. This. This is a transmitter? Yeah, we like to keep in touch with all our friends. So. You are clever, but perhaps you are so clever you can tell why I should let you take back the plans. Just like that. Sure, this is why. Pilot to Consul, I'm in room 565 Skelton Building, East 49th Street. How soon can you have the police here? No, not the police here. Take your cursed plans and the box, too. I knew you'd see it my way. There will be another time, Mr. Mercury. Anyway, you wouldn't really want supercar here. The parking space is mighty limited. Satisfactory. Most satisfactory. But, Mike, we have built no apparatus which will transmit both homing signals and the human voice. So? You know that, Professor. I know it. Dr. Beaker knows it. It's too bad Master Spy didn't know it, too.
supercar, supercar, with beauty and grace as swift as can be, watch it flying through the air, it travels in space or under the sea, and it can journey anywhere, supercar, supercar, it travels on land or roams the skies through the heavens stormy rage. It's Mercury man and everyone cries. It's the marvel of the age. Supercar, supercar, supercar.